What's up, people? It's your girl Adiola, and we are back to Ethiopia where a war is presently going on, all based on ethnicity. And I wanted to update you guys on what has been happening. Our last report on the war in Ethiopia was two weeks ago, and the link is in the description below. It will give you guys a better understanding of what's happening if you haven't been following the news. But a number of shocking things have happened since our last report. Keep in mind that the war is happening in the Tigrayan part of the country, it's in the northern part of the country, and this is the ethnic group that was in power for three decades and now wants to get back in power. Now the truth of the matter about what's happening in Ethiopia is still not clear to so many of us that are outside of Ethiopia and that's why we are always looking forward to hearing from all ethnic groups in Ethiopia in the comment section. Please enlighten us. The government has stopped all phone communications in that area like I told you guys in the past. There's limited movement but you know I was really shocked to hear that local Tigrayan youth known as the Samris with the help of their local administration went from door to door to find people that were were not from their own ethnic group, people that were not Tigrayans but were living in the Tigrayan region, the Amharas, the Wolkite ethnic groups, they stabbed them, they strangled them, they hacked them. At least 600 of them were killed. Ethiopia's Human Rights Commission says at least 600 civilians were killed in a massacre in the northern Tigray state earlier this month. A local informal youth group of targeting non-Tigrayans uh, who are residing there and killing them in a horrible fashion. Uh, some of them were bitten by sticks, others were burned, uh, and the others uh, were also stabbed. You know, I'm still shaking, as in this is happening in 2020. I don't understand why we would do this to ourselves. All this because of ethnicity? Uh, uh, the UN has said that the massacre that took place in the Tigrayan region is considered a war crime. Now the government is only estimating that 600 people were killed because the phone lines are still down, communications are down, but so many people believe that it's way more than 600 that were killed. These were fathers, mothers, innocent children, massacred without doing anything wrong except for the fact that they were different. It makes no sense. And maybe because they were speaking a different language. I should also point out that not all Tigrayans are in support of this ethnic cleansing that is happening in the Tigrayan region. In fact, there are reports that some Tigrayans hid people of other ethnic groups in their homes and saved them from being massacred. We're really grateful to those people. I remember talking about this the last time, how important it is for us to realize that we have more in common than our differences and stop capitalizing on our differences, not just in Ethiopia, but this whole ethnic difference in Africa is leading to the death of so many people. I'm trying to say that we have more in common common than our differences. And it's so important for us to pay attention to what's happening in Ethiopia because this can happen anywhere. It's the same thing that led to the genocide in Rwanda. So as expected, the government of Ethiopia is also attacking the Tigrayan army. Missiles are flying into the Tigrayan region. The government allegedly destroyed one of their universities in the Tigrayan region. And so if the government of Ethiopia is also firing missiles into the Tigrayan region, there would definitely be innocent people that will also be killed be it innocent Tigrayans or innocent people of other ethnic groups. So now you have thousands of people fleeing, you have people from other ethnic groups fleeing, and you have Tigrayans who never wanted the war in the first place also fleeing to neighboring countries. And guess what? Within the last two weeks that we talked about this, the number of refugees fleeing from Ethiopia to Sudan has surpassed 40,000. And there are reports that it is increasing by 30,000 every day. So I don't even know how many it would be by the time you're watching this video. The other sad thing that has happened is is the fact that so many families have been separated in the course of trying to flee from this war. Mahara Tesfai fled with most of her children, but she had to leave her two eldest daughters behind in Tigris capital, Mekele. They went to study in Mekale where their school is. Then the fighting started and there was no way for me to contact them. One is 14 and one is 15. Are they being fed? Are they being taken care of? They're only children. <laughs> Wow. You know, as usual, children and women are more susceptible in times like this. 
When the fighting came to the town of my cadre, everyone started running. These three siblings were in the town and seemed lost, so I took them with me. I tried to look for their parents, but I couldn't find them. I've even used loudspeakers among those displaced. When all failed, I came with them to this camp. Wow. Meanwhile, it's not as if Sudan doesn't have its own issues that they're dealing with before this happened. In fact, the camps that they are moving into in Sudan is not that convenient. The shortage of food and water. Yet people are going there just to survive. The number of those arriving here has been increasing so fast that many of them are still without shelter. Access to basic services such as clean water, food and health care is also challenging. Yet for many, this place is once again providing them with the refuge they need. And the war has affected neighboring country Eritrea as well. The Tigrayan forces allegedly fired three missiles into the Asmara region of Eritrea. You know, when people start a war, it's always hard to know how it will end because it's starting to get out of hands in Ethiopia. As a matter of fact, the UN is estimating that there will be at least 200,000 refugees that will be fleeing from Ethiopia in the coming months. And all this is happening as the rest of us are preparing for Christmas, you know, with our family members. These refugees did not plan this. You know, they also had great plans for themselves, except that some selfish people are the ones behind this. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian Prime Minister says he doesn't want any foreign country to interfere in their internal affairs. The federal government had every right to deploy federal security forces and use force in order to apprehend those implicated in massive corruption and gross human rights violation. So the UN says that they are running out of supplies and they are now asking for donations for the Ethiopian refugees. I'll put the link in the description if anyone is willing to help. Please help these refugees. We're urging donors and international organizations to help us cope with the situation because it's very dire. Some organizations have provided aid, but there's too many people for the state and for a few organizations. They need services and they need care, which we can't provide alone. Sudan already has its economic problems, so we need the international community to help us with this crisis. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister said that he gave the Tigray till Wednesday night, that's actually tonight, for them to surrender. Otherwise, the Ethiopian army would surround the Tigray capital. I'm hoping to hear from Ethiopians as usual, Ethiopians of all ethnic groups. I would really like to know what exactly the Tigrayans want and also how this can be settled. We'll keep you guys posted on what's happening in Ethiopia. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. All right, y'all. It's been real and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you yet to subscribe, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.